Hey, welcome back to Gold Scratch. So this is the fourth video in a series about, uh, started out to be a repair. It's more like a complete uh, rebuild now for uh, my customer, Paul Vanderspe Vanderspecks 350. And it's still sitting there. And <clears throat> if you wonder why I do more talking than working lately, I had a little day surgery last week and I can't lift more than five pounds so I can't even get the crankshaft out of this thing for another week or so so I got lots of time to talk and and answer comments but uh, I can't do much work anyway what I'm going to do today is on the fourth video uh, the third led up to you know decision making time what are we going to do and I'm going to describe to you uh, what we're going to do and just to give you a quick insight, we are going to install a brand new balance rotating eagle assembly, rods, pistons, crank, the whole carry on. Uh, and we're going to take this block to the machine shop. We're going to bore it 30 thousandths and we're going to deck it. And I'm going to describe to you today cause and effect. What caused this engine to go down? And uh, what we're going to do to fix it, you need to understand the problem. And then from there, you can make a determinate solution. So first clip, I'm going to give you an overview. And then I'm going to stop and zoom in the camera. And so I can show you exactly what I'm talking about. So just a little trivia. When's the last time you saw tools like this? this is, these are called set squares, scale, uh, and Along with that, in a uh, slide rule and a drawing board, that's how I made a living in the early days. Uh, and I still use these tools. They are more than 50 years old, and I still use them a lot for things like this. So I made a little sketch for you, and I'm going to explain that uh, in detail when I zoom in. It would be a lot easier to show it. Because one of the things that we determined in the, in the teardown was uh, after a couple of videos and lots of input from viewers who gave me their comments was that uh, you know we had some kind of some form of detonation going on that hammered out the rod bearings and hammered out the main bearings the top of the rod bearings and the bottom of the main bearings were hammered pretty good and uh, so what caused that please like and subscribe before I forget because I probably will uh, we are a few days away from 20,000 subscribers, so pretty excited about that. That's a milestone. I know some guys have 2 million, but we're happy to get 20,000 for now. And we'll keep making, try to make valuable, interesting, formative videos for you if you keep subscribing, sharing, liking, all that. Anything you can do to support our channel. Okay, back to the subject. So, one of the things that we determined in, carry on, in the teardown was there was a lot of carbon in the cylinders and a lot of carbon on the pistons. So what does that do? Well, if you have a combination of, uh, of lots of carbon and depending on the tune, let's say the throttle plates are open a little too much, timing's a little bit slow, things like that, the, the carbon can actually glow red uh, and ignite the fuel and air mixture before the spark plug fires. So the piss is coming up, it's compressing. Sometimes we call it dieseling. You can have spontaneous combustion just because the pressure is rising so fast when the piston's coming up, combined with a lot of temperature, okay? And that can happen anywhere before the piston fires. So what it's trying to do is push the piston back down in the direction it's coming from instead of rotating and making power. And a lot of times in these engines, back in the 70s when they first went to low timing, low compression ratios, etc., the engine would actually turn backwards after you shut it off. So and this one might have done that too. So anyway, the result was we hammered out a lot, hammered out the bearings. We had to determine the cause. So uh, detonation, that is a form of detonation, pre-ignition if you like, where you have ignition before the spark plug fires. So why did that happen? So we looked at uh, the way this engine was built. Uh, that's, you can see it in this video, I'm not sure. I just put the piston back in and rechecked the deck height. And 
one of the things they didn't pay enough attention to was quench. And I'm going to give you a little uh, demonstration on quench today, what it was before, okay, and what it's going to be after we do this build. Because you have to pay attention. When we, were, when we looked at the rotating assembly, and we're going to uh, source this from Barry at Performance Unlimited, Balance, rotating assembly, pretty reasonable cost. Uh, but when you look at, one thing you have to look at is the quench height of the pistons because the quench height of the pistons were actually less than the standard quench height. 1.540 is the quench height of these pistons. 1.560 is the standard quench height. So uh, you have to do something about that. So here's what happened before. This piston was in the hole, uh, I just double checked, 40 thousandths with a 40 thousandths head gasket, okay? Uh, that's 80 thousandths of quench. That's way too much. What does that do? That promotes uh, less than complete combustion, improper combustion, pre-ignition, a whole bunch of other bad things. And so where does carbon come from? Carbon is a product of incomplete combustion. All of the fuel, all the carbon in the fuel didn't get burnt, and so it stuck to the piston and stuck to the head instead. So for that reason, we had a carbon buildup. So cause and effect, uh, not enough quench, causes pre-ignition, causes lack of uh, full combustion, carbon deposits, carbon deposits create detonation. Detonation basically destroyed this good engine, otherwise had lots of good parts in it. So we're going to replace all that, but we have to fix that problem. So the next thing we do is instead of using what the original builder did, 40 thousandths quench height uh, from the top of the piston to the top of the deck, another 40 thousandths head gasket, 80 thousandths of quench this engine had before. And that is one of the reasons probably why they had so much carbon deposits. So looking for your comments on that, whether you agree with my theory and now I'm going to uh, shut down and go to the next clip where I can describe more closely uh, with using my illustration that I made with my 1960s tools, uh, how that works. So I moved the camera a lot closer so you can see uh, the illustration I prepared. So that is not quite the scale, but pretty darn close. Uh, 350, this is Paul's engine, a 350 cubic inch, four inch bore, 3.48 inch stroke uh, engine. So on the left side is what would have, we would have had if we just ordered this rotating assembly and installed a standard 40 thou thick head gasket. And on the right side is what I'm proposing to do or one possible combination of what I'm proposing because there's more ways than one to fix this. So uh, first of all, you start off with uh, the standard deck height of small buck chev is 9025. Nine, and that's from the center line of the crankshaft to the, the uh, top of the cylinder in, in, the, in the block, okay? 9025, and that's made up with, if your stroke is 3.48, that's your crankshaft, that's your connecting rod, 3.48, half of that is 1.74. Your, your connecting rod is 5.7 inches long. And the compression height, which is the distance from the center line of the pin to the top of the piston is 1.540, okay? And that gives you 8.98 inches. If you add all that up, trust me, I did that, okay? Then if the deck height is 9.025, you subtract that 8.98 from 9025, and you get 045. So you would have, if I just installed this uh, Eagle rotating assembly as it came into the block, I would have a deck height from distance from the top of the piston to the top of the block, 045. Add to that the thickness of the standard head gasket, 040. That's 085. That would be the quench that we would have. And not only that, of course, it would reduce your compression ratio as well, so, okay? So, but we're talking about quench here. So here's what we're proposing to do on the right side of the, of the center line. Same piston, everything else is the same, 
which is half of the stroke, 5.7, which is the length of the connecting rod, 1.540, which is the compression height of the piston. So what I'm proposing to do now is deck the block 20 thousandths, take, and so the block deck, uh, deck height will be 9.005 instead of 9.025, okay, now. Okay, and then use a 15 thou thick shim style stainless steel head gasket, which is the OEM. And we can use this gasket on this engine because Paul's uh, 292 uh, angle plug heads are cast iron. So you can use an 015 head gasket on a cast iron head. Unfortunately, you can't do that with an aluminum head. So you'd have to use another combination of decking and head gaskets. But anyway, let's stick to this plan. So now we have a deck height of, or sorry, a quench of, if you subtract uh, the quench from, or the deck height from, sorry, from the deck, top of the piston to the deck is 025, because we've taken 20 thou off. It was 045 before, so now it's 025. I use a 15 thou head gasket, and now if you add that 15 and 25, it's 040. And that's our new quench versus 085. So 040 is a good number. I don't want to go less than that. I could because I can deck it more. Uh, and that'll be a good number. 040, 045 is kind of what we aim for usually. I think it's a safe number. And that's the plan right now. Now, another way that I could do that would be deck the block less than that. And you can buy a a head gasket with 026, uh, I think is the thinnest uh, head gasket that you could buy, 026, and so you have, you could deck the engine less and still get your 040. There's other combinations that you could use. So let's let's just uh, look at that possibility. So now I'm going to have a quench of 040. Uh, my compression is going to be a little better as well, of course, because I've decked the block and used the thinner head gasket and we should not have an issue, if the tune is right, we should not have an issue with uh, carbon buildup uh, in this engine, which eventually re leads to uh, detonation, which leads to destroying the bearings in the engine. So hope you found that helpful, and I'm uh, gonna stop there and leave it with you. Uh, please like and subscribe. Let me know if you found this interesting. Uh, the plan is, uh, when I get uh, healthy or well enough, I'm going to take this block to the machine shop, have it bored, decked, Magnaflux, hot tank, all that stuff, and get the rotating assembly from Barry, and we'll show you more videos on the assembly. Thank you for watching Gold Scratch.